World War 3 Open Beta is finally here and with it a lot of new players have joined the battle. The game is still a little rough around the edges but when it comes to gameplay World War 3 is a hidden gem. And in today's video I want to give you guys a quick beginner guide on how to get started in World War 3 and how to improve your game. Don't forget to drop a like and a comment to support and subscribe if you're new here. Without any further ado, let's begin. First we're going to start with creating your loadout. You must keep in mind that the loadout is based on a weight system so you can't carry a sniper with an RPG and full armor. All of this must be balanced so you can use weapons you want and also have protection. So for example if you want to be an anti-armor player you can go for an assault rifle with an RPG at the cost of losing all your armor. Or you can go fully decked out rifle with big armor. Here you definitely have to see what playstyle you want to have and definitely create as many loadouts as you can for every type of situation. Don't forget to customize your backpack as well because that can be very important while in game to change the stuff on the go. Next we have some in-game options in the HUD section. The HUD can be very obstructive sometimes in World War 3 so toning down the opacity and the scale of things can be a good thing and can be done very easily in game. So definitely go take a look at that if you think the HUD is messing with your peripheral vision. When it comes to the menu it's all pretty straightforward and most of you will know what to do but if you still have any question ask them below and I'll do a part 2 of this. Now let's move on to in-game stuff. Here are a lot of things that you can learn on the go, in time, and now I'll go over the most basic and important things to know when starting to play World War 3. So let's begin. You can spot an object by pressing X. This will show a green square that is showcased to friendlies, and by double tapping X you can mark with red an enemy location for example, or something that the team needs to be aware of. Also you can spot enemies or vehicles by looking at them and pressing X once. And even more, if you are in need of health or ammo, you can just look at a teammate who carries ammo or a medbag and press X to ask them to drop supplies. This is a very important tool in World War 3 as it can help the team get, take better decisions or be more aware of the unknown dangers that are close to them. PTFO is another big aspect of this game, so if you are the squad leader, make sure to always mark objectives to attack or defend as this will coordinate the squad better and will help all members reach kill streaks a bit faster whenever you are nearby friendlies who are in a fight always drop ammo bag med bag or equipment bag as this will help them get back in the fight faster and replenish all their needs keep in mind that the equipment bag now will replenish armor in addition to grenades as well so definitely this will be a very viable tool at least for one of your squad mates don't forget you have a backpack while in game where you can change certain attachments on the go but keep in mind that in order to have attachments to use you have to add them in the backpack from the loadout menu. Also the backpack can let you equip more than 5 attachments per weapon and what I like to do is put any of the scope and muzzle of the gun in the loadout menu so I can equip the attachments on the other categories and while in game I equip the scope and muzzle from the backpack and you could definitely use up to 7 attachments like this, which is kind of crazy, but it definitely works pretty well. Although when it comes to muzzle, you can only use suppressors, but they're actually pretty good. They help you with vertical and horizontal recoil, and they keep you off the minimap at all times. So definitely keep an eye on this and try to work with whatever works best for you, basically. Speed is not as important in World War 3 as in other games, so don't be afraid to have maximum weight on your loadout. Armor is more important if the loadout allows you. You'll always have to use the big armor pack, but keep in mind that those will not work all the time with every weapon. There are some weapons that are a lot heavier than others, so definitely make sure to prioritize armor instead of weapons. Although in some cases like the M417 you kind of have to use the small armor as it doesn't allow you to use the big head armor and the big chest armor alongside with it. Positioning is something everyone has to consider while fighting someone so always play the cover game because if you are caught in the open you are most likely going to lose that fight. Leaning is very useful in this game as it will help you keep the most of your body in cover, make you basically a much smaller target to hit, so always try to use it, but keep in mind that it will make your head more vulnerable, so always pay attention when you peek. Headshots are extremely important in this game, as they do insane damage, so when fighting an enemy always aim for the head. When it comes to headshots most weapons require 2-3 to three shots to take out someone, so definitely keep an eye on that. So basically whenever you have the chance, if the enemy is standing still or something, always go for the headshot. The recoil in World War 3 doesn't really have a pattern, it's more random, so the only thing you can do is upgrade your weapon 
the most you can in order to reduce and control it easier. Some weapons have lower recoil, some have higher recoil, but always attachments will help you the most when it comes to fighting at longer ranges. And a lot of you have asked me what are the best guns in the game. Well, I always go for the M416 whenever I have the chance, but the barrel and some others like the AK-15 can be really useful as well. Hip fire is also really good up close, even without the laser sight, so never be afraid to use it when you're in close combat situations. I can't even tell you how many gunfights I won like this. ADS definitely takes some time, so always go for the hip fire whenever you have the chance up close because it will reward you more than you think. So definitely don't sleep on the hip fire. Snipers in World War 3 are very strong as well. All of them will one shot you in the head at all times, besides the M200, which will one hit you anywhere in the body. But using the compact barrel on the other snipers can give you the capability to one hit someone in the neck or chest at very close ranges. But keep in mind that using the long barrel won't have the same effect at range. Snipers also have a glint while using the big scope so they can be very easily spot from distance. So if you are one of the snipers definitely pay attention to that. Tanks are really strong in this game, but even someone with an AR can damage them. If you don't have anything to fight back, try to aim for the visors placed on top of the tanks. Bullets will do damage and even destroy the visor, leaving the tank blind on the main gunner and the second gunner defenseless as they cannot shoot anymore. This doesn't work with SMGs, only works with the bigger bullets, so like 5.56 and 7.62. Also, snipers do extremely damage to visors, so definitely keep an eye on that. If you're using an M200 or something like that, definitely help your team by shooting the visors on the tank or any other LAV or something. Also, rockets will do more damage to vehicles if you hit them in the back, basically as in Battlefield games. UAVs are really strong in this game, so definitely make sure to use them at all times. They barely cost anything and they can be spammed quite often and they will give you a huge tactical advantage over the enemy. If you see a Scarab or a Leviathan or drones, try to use your jammer. This will mess with the controls of the vehicle and give you a chance to fight back. They basically work through Wi-Fi, so whenever you try to use a jammer, they'll mess up the controls. So they will not be able to escape and you can definitely take them out using your weapons as well. Because most drones can be actually destroyed with bullets, especially LMGs, because they can do insane damage for a very long time because of the MAC capacity. When playing tactical ops, in order to bleed tickets from the enemies, you have to link two points together. So if you capture A1, you basically have to capture A2 as well in order to bleed tickets. Basically, you have to capture a sector to get the tickets from the enemies. Your health won't replenish by itself to 100%. Your health bar is split into three. And if your health drops between the first and the second bar, your health only replenishes until the third one. So basically you will have 67%. And to top that off, you have to use the med bag or the med pen, which can be equipped from the backpack instead of the grenades. So that's it about today's video, guys. There are a lot more things to cover in this game, but I'll do another video on that. World War 3 definitely has some nice features and skills to learn. And once you do, you can really dominate the battlefield. But for now, I think this is enough for a beginner guide, basically. If you have anything to add to the list or anything else you want to know, definitely drop them in the comments below. But anyways, with all this being said, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, as always, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. Comment down below your thoughts to help with the algorithm. And I'll see you guys in the next one.